spectacular images from the depths of space. Scientists present pictures of Titan, the enigmatic moon of Saturn. But what makes this celestial body so fascinating and Earth-like? Let's delve into Titan's mysteries together. Titan Big, bigger, the mighty Titan. No other of Saturn's 83 known moons comes close to the satellite's impressive dimensions. The diameter of the celestial body amounts to 5,150 kilometers. The constant companion of the Earth brings it in this category on a value of only 3,475 kilometers. In spite of this, however, Titan cannot claim the title of being the largest moon in the solar system. With a diameter of 5,262 kilometers, Jupiter's Trabant, Ganymede, towers atop the lunar giants. Officially, Titan is classified as an icy moon. As the name suggests, the surfaces of these celestial bodies are mostly in frozen form. Against this background, it should surprise nobody that the average surface temperature of Titan is a bone-chilling minus 183 degrees Celsius. Added to the star charts in 1655 by Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens, the natural colossus still resembles a cosmic mystery in some respects. This is not least due to the fact that the celestial body has so far only been visited once directly. Apart from the groundbreaking images and data that the Huygens space probe captured on Titan's surface in 2005, Saturn's moon was only to be studied as part of a few flybys and space telescope observations. Yet, even a brief glance at the texture of the moon's surface is enough to unleash a strange feeling in our chest. On the one hand, the structures that catch our eye in the Huygens images seem strange and surreal, but on the other hand, they also seem strangely familiar. And for good reason. Titan is actually considered to be the celestial body in the solar system that most resembles our earthly home. To understand the background of this fact, we should take a look at the fascinating spectacles that give the satellite its natural appearance. The myriad accumulations of liquid methane and ethane. Revolutionary Findings the fact that Titan is considered the most Earth-like celestial body in the solar system is due less to its material composition than to the shape of its surface. True to the motto, so similar and yet so different, it consists of completely different materials than the outside of the Earth. The fact that today we have so much information about the fluid accumulations and the natural face of Titan, we owe to the already briefly mentioned Cassini-Huygens mission. At this point, a brief overview. The namesake probes left our blue home planet on October 15, 1997 to explore Saturn's realms at close range. Almost seven years later, the orbit of the ringed planet was reached, and on January 14, 2005, finally came the day when Huygens touched down on Titan's surface. And even though the spacecraft subsequently took images and sent information for only 72 minutes, this short period of time was enough to revolutionize our knowledge of Saturn's largest of all moons. 474 Mbit of collected data and 606 captured images later, it was clear that the satellite's atmosphere is composed primarily of methane and nitrogen. In turn, the detected isotope Argon-40 revealed that the celestial body is also the scene of volcanic activity. A volcanism, which differs, however, clearly from the spectacles on Earth. While these terrestrial fire mountains spew boiling hot lava and ash, the Titan formations spew ammonia and water ice. From the fact that two specific isotope types were missing on the Moon, the experts concluded that it must have lost its complete protective shell over time. In this regard, an analysis of nitrogen molecules revealed that Titan's atmosphere was once five times denser than it is today. Something of particular interest, since Saturn's gravitational influence on Titan is 400 times more intense than that of the Moon on Earth, a kind of ebb and flow mechanism is established within Titan's atmosphere. Behind the Veil Huygens' landing on Titan's surface, 
was significant, not least because it had previously been almost impossible for experts to see behind the moon's dense atmospheric veil. According to the report, the natural protective shell harbors an extensive cloud band of methane, ethane, and other hydrocarbons that regularly rain down on the surface, largely blocking the view beyond. Thanks to Huygens, however, we now know that the moon's outer surface is characterized by deposits of organic material. Furthermore, the nature of the substance is reminiscent of wet sand, which is sometimes arranged in dune-like formations. Beyond these optical parallels, however, the material on Titan consists primarily of contaminated hydrocarbon and hydrogen ice. The images Huygens captured shortly before landing show us the landscape in all its glory. Thus, a multi-layered relief of mountains, valleys, and dunes greets us on the moon, which has amazing similarities with our earthly formations. In the same breath, Huygens also discovered some other breathtaking structures on Titan. Countless rivers, lakes, and even small oceans. The Architect of the Moon Unlike what we know from Earth, however, these are not accumulations and streams of water, but liquid methane. In principle, however, the chemical compound on Titan takes on the same role that water plays on our Earth. It acts as a natural architect. This means that methane lakes and rivers leave unmistakable traces on the hard, frozen, water ice crust of the satellite, leading to the formation of Earth-like landscapes. The two celestial bodies also show astonishing parallels in terms of atmospheric circulation. Just like water on Earth, the methane on Titan is subject to a cycle of evaporation and rainfall. In one point, however, the two celestial bodies differ from each other in a very clear way, namely in the amount of their own liquid supply. If one follows the official calculations of NASA, the occurrence of liquid hydrocarbons on Titan exceeds the global terrestrial water reserves by a hundredfold. The fact that the methane on Titan can exist at all in a permanently liquid form and accumulate in the form of gigantic lakes is due to the icy temperatures that prevail on its surface. Researchers already knew before the Cassini-Huygens mission that Saturn's satellite harbors such formations. But until then, they had assumed that they were only found in the polar regions of the celestial body an assumption that was invalidated by the images taken by the Cassini probe. Because in fact, we find the lakes and rivers also in the regions around the equator. The Oceans of Titan The incredible dimensions that the methane accumulations on Titan can sometimes assume are demonstrated by the three largest lakes, which scientists have christened Kraken Mare, Lajaya Mare, and Punga Mare. The area of Krakenmare, for example, is estimated at 400,000 square kilometers. The largest lake on Earth, the Caspian Sea, on the other hand, covers an area of 371,000 square kilometers. The Jayamare is somewhat more compact, but no less exciting. With an area of 126,000 square kilometers, this small methane ocean has an average depth of 170 meters. Framed by rugged coastlines and punctuated by large bays, it embodies the estuary of a 400-kilometer-long river that regularly supplies the sea with new supplies in addition to the methane rain. Other Lake Types While such large formations dominate the eastern half of the Moon, we encounter much smaller but more numerous methane lakes in the western regions. However, these accumulations do not nestle into the landscape at the approximate sea level, but adorn table mountains hundreds of meters high, and they sometimes have extremely steep banks. This special location also means that these types of lakes cannot draw their supplies from tributaries. Instead, they must be fed by recurring rainfall, much like we know from the Earth's remote crater lakes. Bubbling Spectacles just like our blue home planet, Titan is subject to some seasonal fluctuations, with the enormous difference that the individual seasons do not last there three months, but in each case, eight years. 
After the spring has started on the northern hemisphere of the moon, the methane evaporates in rough quantities and rises into the atmosphere. The clouds, which form thereupon, move from now on to the south, where they pour down in violent precipitations on the surface. However, this is not the only process associated with the changing seasons. For example, some scientists have calculated within the framework of theoretical models that the different phases could also trigger a bubbling spectacle. Namely, the nitrogen dissolved in the liquid methane would flow out in bubbles. But icebergs could also be part of the common face of the surreal lake landscapes. This assumption is based on the premise that the density of the liquid hydrocarbons is greater than the density of the solid hydrocarbons. However, whether the methane waters are really covered in places by floating hydrocarbon ice will have to be shown by future investigations. And now we want your opinion. What do you think about the unique images of Titan? What feature of the moon amazed you the most? Feel free to share your thoughts and write them in the comments below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you'll never miss one of our videos again. Are you in the mood for more exciting contributions on the topic of outer space? Then take a look at the other videos on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the images in the credits. And with that, thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time.